I, I will focus my presentation on the human exposure part. Uh, my name is Wouter Fransman. I work for TNO in the Netherlands, which is a, a non-for-profit research organization. And we are involved in, in, in many um, uh, EU-funded projects, of which I think Guide Nano and Sun are the, are the major ones at this moment on, on nano safety. Um, uh, although our department covers both toxicology and, and exposure, my, my, my background is in exposure uh, sciences in all sorts of chemical substances, but, but nanomaterial has been a, uh, a focus point over the last uh, uh, years. Uh, what I would have liked to do today, uh, but given the, the, the limited time we have available, I, 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 will, I will skip some of the presentation because I think that's, that's slightly out of the scope of, uh, of the human exposure assessment. But what I would have liked to show you is, is a project that we performed, the, the Lycara project, in which we tried and succeeded to, 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 to balance the benefits and the risks of nanomaterial along the entire life cycle of a, of a nano product. Uh, so given the time I will not focus on that but you can go to the, to the TNO website slash Lycara and there you can, can access the Lycara nano scan. You have to log in and, but it's, it's free to use. Um, and there you can browse through different uh, uh, parts of, of, of environmental hazards, uh, uh, human hazards as well as the benefits of, of nano products. So, so what I would like to focus on today is actually two, two platforms that we, that we have developed and use, um, uh, which are actually quite widespread, and that's what I'd like to, 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 to show you today and, and, and that, you, that you need to take home from this, from this workshop on human exposure is, is the fact that uh, there's not so much uh, a real data around, so, so, so we really needed to come up with a risk assessment approach which was based on very limited information and, and, and the Stoffer Manager Nano tools, some of which you might already know it. It's a con control bending or risk bending tool in which SMEs or um, uh, uh, larger industries can prioritize their risk of working with nanomaterials. So if a company produces nanomaterials or, they, or they, they deal with a bag of nanopowder, they will be able to, to, to somehow screen uh, the level of, of, of health risk that comes from, from working with this, with this nanomaterials. So it's not a quantitative tool yet, and, and we started this initiative, I think, about five years ago when there was a, a huge lack of, of, of quantitative data on, on human risk assessment. Uh, and in the meantime, I think we, we, are, we are getting there, and you could see that from, from other workshops this morning and this afternoon, that we are, 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 are getting towards databases with, with quantitative uh, information on both the exposure and the hazard side. But five years ago, there was, there, there was not so much around, and, and another, another reason for, for starting the Stoff Manager Nano platform or tool is that, that small and medium enterprises are not so acquainted with, with nanomaterial use, production, and all the detailed information that we've just seen in these in this case studies and, and in, other, in other presentations on, on both the toxicological and the environmental exposure part. The other initiative that I would like to show today is, is a, a, a database structure, the NESIT, so the Nano Exposure and Contextual Information Database that we, that we created. And we're already linking that also to the NanoMapper uh, project and platform. And that's a database for, for measured exposure data in workplaces. So that's uh, exactly the opposite of the Stoff Manager Nano, basically, because that database contains a lot of detailed information on, on workplace exposure. So, so it's the, there's the information on the, on, the, on the location where you measure, on the workplace where you measure, on the workers that are present, on the use of risk management measures, on the, on the quantity that's used, on, on the type of activity that's performed. So it's, well, I will show you in a minute, it's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of, of data that you need to provide to enter entries in the, in the database. So first briefly, the, the Stoffer Manager Nano. Um, as I said, it, it, it was developed for small and medium enterprises uh, because, let's say, about five years ago, it, it was quite still quite difficult and expensive to perform measurements and, and basically 
performing measurements was the only way to, to get a real good feel for what is the human exposure, what, what are people inhaling in, in nanomaterials uh, during their work. Um, I will today I will focus mainly on the exposure part because that's the, that's the aim of, of, of my workshop. But, but the soft Manager Nano is, is a risk bending tool, so it combines hazard information with exposure information. It's only for inhalation exposure. Of course, a human being can also be uh, exposed to the skin or, or to oral uh, uh, taken. But this tool is only focused on inhalation exposure because for the for the worker exposure that's the main route of exposure. Well, it's basically created for all types of, of nanomaterials, so it's not nanomaterial specific, but as I, as I mentioned, it's qualitative and not quantitative, so, it's, so it will lump together different nanomaterials. Uh, on the website, the Stoffer Manager website, there's also a community portal, and the, 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 the nano part of Stoffer Manager is only, is only one module of the, of the entire Stoffer Manager platform. Uh, because the software manager website is, is primarily uh, 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 developed for chemical substances. So the nanomaterials is really an add-on on, on the already existing software manager. So this is what the, what, 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 what the login screen uh, looks like. So here you already see um, different, uh, so here's the community portal. There's the, the, the generic software manager and the nano module are here. Uh, uh, for the exercise today, I would like you to, to, to create a new account. You'll, you'll get a, 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 an email right away in which you can log in. So, so please register with an email account that you can access here. Uh, and you can, and you can, can use the, the website uh, right away. Well, the hazard banding, as I just mentioned, I will not go into this toxicological part because that has already been dealt with this morning. But it's basically a decision tree which, which guides you to a, to a hazard band in the end, which spreads from A to, to E. Uh, a being the lowest hazard profile and E being the, the most stringent hazard. The exposure banding uh, uh, part has been described in a paper by, by Thomas Schneider. Uh, here it mentioned in press, but it has been published uh, already, which basically defines four different source domains or process domains throughout the life cycle of a product. So starting from the, uh, from the synthesis uh, phase, where you can have point or fugitive emission sources, uh, through to the handling of bulk nano powders in, in a bag or, or bagging or handling the powder, then it's, it's, it's incorporated into a product, which, which could be either a liquid product, like, like a spray or a canister or whatever, or, or a solid product. Um, and, and finally, the fourth source domain is, is the end phase of, of, a, of a product. Uh, well, it's basically the abrasion or, or the demolition of the, uh, of the nano product. The, the, the software manager model, uh, uh, the generic one, and also the nano one, is, is comprised of different compartments uh, in, in the inhalation exposure, which is called the source receptor model, which basically defines the, 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 the movement of a, of a powder or a liquid from a source to the receptor. And the receptor is, in this case, the, the, the worker or the human being. Um, and the first step, of course, is the emission. So the emission from the source, which, well, from a simplific point of view, is, 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 is determined by, by products, so intrinsic product characteristics, like the dustiness of a powder, uh, in combination with the activity that's performed. So if, you, if you're steering or, or, or milling or whatever, depending on the activity that you do, the emission is, is, is larger or smaller. Then when the, when, the, when the material or the chemical substance, but in this case the nanomaterial, is released or emitted from the source, there is a transmission phase, so it's the movement through a room from the emission source to the, to, to the worker. And that's, uh, that's basically uh, uh, defined as the, as the transmission that's determined by the local controls and the ventilation in the room. So, so uh, important parameters there is, is, is for instance, the size or the dimensions of, of the workroom in combination with the ventilation type or the, or the air exchange rate in, in the room. And in addition to this, to this mechanical of room ventilation, there can also be local ventilation or encapsulation or contamination of the, or, uh, uh, encapsulation of the, of the source to reduce emission. 
And the final step is the emission, is the uh, is is well the, the movement from the workroom concentration to the worker, and that can of course be uh, be reduced by using personal protective uh, equipment, or the or the or the worker can be placed in a, in a separate room to uh, to reduce exposure levels. So this is actually a, a, a quite an important, simplific, but it, but it's very important uh, scheme to, to show and to understand that that this that this inhalation exposure is is caused by this or modeled by this source receptor approach, which basically lays the lays the the, the, the fundament of any uh, inhalation human exposure model. Well, after this source receptor model, each of these different boxes in this in this scheme has a uh, has different input parameters so you can there's questions asked and I will show you in a minute in the stuff manager uh, nano model so there's questions on different activities on dustiness etc as I just showed you and each of these input parameters has a, a, a mathematical multiplier to it and all these multipliers are multiplied together into a, 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 a non-dimensionless score which is subdivided into exposure bands. So for instance, the dustiness could have uh, multiplier 3 and the activity could have multiplier 10 and, and they, they, they are combined together into 30 and, and 30 could be an exposure band 3 for instance and, and, and this, is, this is the basis for the exposure assessment model. So, you could say that the underlying scoring system is, is semi-quantitative because the relative scores are, are weighed and we used uh, exposure measurement results to, to derive those, but in the end we, we, we didn't feel quite sure about the quantitative use of the scoring, so we subdivided it into, into, into qualitative uh, uh, bands to, to, well, to represent the current knowledge on, on, on human exposure. Well, and then finally, for the risk assessment uh, uh, tool, uh, d d both these hazard bands and exposure bands are combined in, into a what we call a risk matrix. Um, and as you can see here, of course, if you have a, a high hazard and a high exposure, you end up in the red area, which is giving you a high risk, so a high risk priority, priority one. And if you have an exposure band which is low and a hazard which is low, you end up in here. And we deliberately didn't make this area green because, well, we, we don't know yet, for, especially for nano. So for chemical substances, this would, this would be a green area because we know uh, from, from measurements that this is, a, this is a safe area, but for nano we don't know. So we, so we, so we made, deliberately didn't make this area green. I'll skip this for uh, for now. We we do have future plans, but I, I would like to jump to the to the NESIT uh, database, which is a, a a system that was primarily developed by the IFA in Germany and TNO in in the Netherlands under the umbrella of the of the Parish, which is a a, a a platform of different research institutes within Europe that 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 do uh, harmonization of different research. Uh, a project, uh, but it's it's an unfunded platform, so it's really bringing together knowledge from different projects on 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 a certain level, rather than than being 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 a, a, a real project with a, with a budget and a, and a time scale. Well, it's currently active, actively supported by uh, by eight institutes within Europe and and different external partners. So we try to. So to broaden our scope and, and include as many people as, as possible, and, and I think we we have we've now got most of the major institutes on, on humor, occupational human exposure assessment uh, in Europe. And, uh, and the aim was to, to come up with a harmonized uh, way of storing occupational exposure data. And, and this also started off at about five years ago when we, when we started with a series of workshops to, to harmonize the, well, as we now call it ontology, we, we, we never call it ontology, but as I, as I understand it now from the Nanomapper platform, it's, it's harmonizing the way in which you collect measurement data and, and the way in which you name and, and, and structure variables in a, in a certain exposure field. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a system that, that runs locally on your PC, it's, it's currently only available to the Paris partners and the external partners that have uh, 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 registered to use the system because it has been 
uh, are developed by IFA basically on their own cost. They, they do not want to make it open access yet. But we, we from TNO we would like to spread as much as possible, but they are a bit uh, uh, not so happy with that yet. So we try to convince them. But so so for today we cannot really use the system, and therefore I have I have printed or provided the the guidance documentation in which all the the screens and the screenshots that are in the tool and all the information that's contained in the tool is, is, is listed. So there's different screens and I think there's a bunch of, I think about 20 screens where you can go through with different sets of information uh, and I'll, I'll just browse through the guidance documentation in, in a minute to show you what's in there. So this is the most uh, important slide to show on the, on the NESIT structure. It, it, it's, it's basically a hier hierarchical uh, a structure containing uh, a study, and a study could contain measure, different measurement ID. And what we call a measurement series is basically a, a, a set of workplace samples that are, that are collected um, on, on one day in one factory. So after you have a, me a measurement ID, you can select a, a premise or a location or a company, whatever you, whatever, whatever you like to call it. And, and that company contains a combination of a, of a location, so it's a physical location, a workroom, and a worker that's performing an activity. So this location is, is you have different sets of information on, on the worker. So is the worker using risk management measures or personal protective equipment? Uh, the location is described in different variables, so what's the dimension of the location, what's the ventilation in the room, uh, if there are additional risk management measures. And each of these locations can have, or, and workers can have multiple activities. So one worker can perform multiple activities over a working day, and these activities are described in the, in the database, and, 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 and also any additional secondary sources that could be present in the workroom. So once you've gathered all these, what we call contextual information, so basically the, the, the situation, the description of the situation, uh, there's also the possibility to provide your results, so your, so your measurement results uh, collected by, by a different set of, uh, of instruments, uh, each of which has a different uh, sample ID. And for each of the activities, you could use different materials, nanomaterials, or other ingredients, and you can list those in the, in the database. So that, that was basically the introduction uh, that I would like to give on the, uh, on the different structures. I have provided, and I need to acknowledge of course, the, the Gardnano and the Sun uh, project.